have uh, one hearing tonight, but before we get into that, uh, we start off with our public comment section of the evening. So if there's anybody in the audience tonight who has anything, any comments to say that don't relate specifically to the hearing that we're about to discuss, just raise your hand. And if not, we'll get started. Okay. Uh, we have, again, just one hearing tonight. And it is scheduled for 7 o'clock for Atwood Drive, LLC. It's a major site plan, special permit hotel, multiple curb cut, four-story, 80,000 square foot office slash medical <laughs> building, 107 room hotel, and a 4,000 square foot restaurant at 23 Atwood Drive, map ID 39-41-43, as advertised on October 31st and November 7th. So, we've got a presentation. Yes, good evening. My name is Brian Huntley. I'm with Sign Bond here on behalf of uh, Hospitality North. Uh, with me tonight, I have Dean Chrissy, uh, who is the project engineer for the project that can answer most of the questions that I can, hopefully. Um, we also have, on behalf of the applicant, we have uh, two gentlemen from Development Associates, Kim Vincent, Travis Ward, as well as Kurt Shumway, on behalf of the ownership for the project. Um, very brief project history. Uh, this this redevelopment of this project or of this site has been discussed and conceptualized, conceptualized since the late 1990s. Um, the city of Northampton has had several zoning changes, height changes. Um, the, the site is zoned general business to encourage the type of development that we're proposing. Um, and then more recent site or project history is on the south side of Atwood Drive. Um, approximately three years ago, I believe, there was a similar major project that was permitted by the city of Northampton that includes two office buildings, um, one of which is essentially complete and occupied. The second is nearly complete and should be occupied um, shortly into the beginning of the new year. Um, existing conditions, let me, I, I guess first, and I should have done this originally, is the, the site that we're talking about is a 7.8 acre parcel which is essentially comprises all of the north side of Atwood Drive here, here in the city. Uh, it's the existing site of the Clarion Hotel and Conference Center, as well as all of the associated parking and the outdoor amen amenities to the rear of the hotel, including a pool, tennis court, um, outdoor event area, and a, a small building in the back of the, of the, of the site. Uh, this property falls within the general business zoning district as well as the floodplain overlay, I'm sorry, the floodplain, floodplain protection district. Uh, as I indicated, the existing use is essentially, it's a hotel conference center with a restaurant and lounge um, integral to, to the hotel building itself. Uh, the neighboring uses are, uh, as I indicated, the, the relatively new project to the south, which is medical and general office. Um, we have the Route 91 off-ramp to the north, uh, Interstate 91 is to the west, and then to the east is Route 5 across the street is the uh, auto recycling yard. Um, and as, as a point of interest, the, the floodplain elevation defined in this area uh, is elevation 123 feet, which, which is based on the uh, flood mapping, the flood insurance rate map, as well as a flood insurance study that was done for the Connecticut River in this area. Um, proposed redevelopment, uh, the proposed site, and you can see there's a layout down at the bottom, and I don't have, I guess I have a cursor here, so you can see uh, this is the four-story, 80,000 gross square foot, so 20,000 square foot footprint um, office building, which is a mix of general and medical office. Uh, this outline here is the proposed 107-room hotel. And fronted on Route 5 is a 4,000 square foot sit-down restaurant. Um, parking is, it, and it's outlined in the submittal. There's a table that is totally illegible on this uh, on this sheet as well. But essentially, the parking breaks down that we have 487 spaces proposed, and the breakout shows. 317 for the rear building, 107 is required for the hotel, and then 163 for the restaurant. Uh, from a phasing point of view, we're proposing that the uh, first anticipated phase of the project would be construction of, I'm trying to get the cursor here again, of the office building and the associated amenities that go along with that, with the yellow line essentially uh, drawing the different phasing and follow-on phases to be the 
hotel and the restaurant. Um, not necessarily in that order, depending on how um, the marketing of the project <coughs> can move forward. It's anticipated that the, the office building would go first, but then a follow-on phase would be however the, the site owners can are able to uh, get tenants and get the, pro the project leased out to build. Yes, sir. It says 487 parking spaces, but it would appear to add to 587 spaces. Yeah, I think that restaurant should read 63, not 163. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I apologize for That's that. Right. Just want to make sure. <laughs> it does look like a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as, as indicated in the application, the project phasing that we would propose would be to uh, continue to operate the existing Clarion Hotel for as long as possible during construction of the first building to allow for a cash flow situation where the existing use maintains and prior to a certificate of occupancy, prior to finalizing of the office building, then the, the hotel would be taken off site. And that was a, a proposed schedule that was included in the application that we submitted that would make the project move forward in a, in a financially feasible manner. Um, internal circulation, and we have on here uh, vehicular address, uh, vehicular access, pedestrian and bicycle accommodations. And get the cursor back here again. Uh, essentially, the yellow <laughs> highlighted areas are uh, the sidewalks, where based on comments that we received from, from staff early in the process, we've essentially interconnected all of the uses throughout the site with uh, pedestrian friendly access uh, and sidewalks so each of the uses is interconnected as well as a connection to um, the street and to all the parking areas and throughout the parking areas um, vehicular access uh, the the site will be accessed from atwood drive there are no curb cuts proposed currently or in the future on uh, route 5 or mount tom road as it's called here there are three curb cuts that are proposed on the north side of Atwood Drive. We have one here on the easterly side of the site, which aligns with the basically the, where the existing curb cut is into the hotel area. And then there are two towards the rear. One of them is off the cul-de-sac at the end with the intention that it would give a more direct route and better access to trucks to the loading dock here at the rear of the building. And then there's an additional access point here just east of the proposed office building as well. Um, from a bicycle accommodation, we're proposing uh, bicycle storage. And I can't tell, but I believe it's right here on the side. Yes, right, right there. There's a, a proposed bicycle rack um, for, for storage at the facility. In addition to, there are currently a uh, bike rack, which are in approximately this, this location, um, on the south side of Atwood Drive, which are, were intended to, to serve the south side development from a previous project. Traffic impact. So the, the board has a full traffic study that we did an analysis of existing conditions, um, future conditions, both with and without build for 2018 um, anticipated traffic. Uh, what we came up with through through that process is that we do trigger five of the signal warrants, which would justify installing a signal at the intersection of Atwood Drive and Route 5. Uh, the little blow up on the screen shows the approximate mitigation that we're proposing, which would be a signal at the intersection with some dedicated turn lanes and straight lanes, both on you know, reconfiguration of Atwood Drive and some striping and some pavement changing, uh, pavement marking changes on Route 5 to give us dedicated left turn into Atwood Drive from Route 5 North, um, and then a straight through run on Route 5 North as well. Uh, we did analysis of both the, the Con Street roundabout as well as the I-91 uh, signal, which are both projects that are, that are coming on board and that are in process. Um, I, know the con I don't know the, the schedule on the Con Street roundabout, but I do know that the I-91 southbound ramp signal is underway, and I saw the concrete was poured out there the other day for a signal that's going in place. Um, point of note is we have been in, in discussion with MassDOT uh, in Northampton, the District 2 office to be able to talk about what we're proposing here for a signal and how that can be interconnected. And the good news is that the, the existing uh, 
I-91 signal as well as the proposed I-91 signal uh, both have interconnection back to Mass Highway District. So we should be able to provide a signal here as well that provides connectivity back to the district. So all of those signals can be linked and get, can be timed together, which really provides a benefit to uh, traffic flow through the area. And it, it gives us the, the traffic improvements that we need to uh, to provide mitigation for the additional traffic that would be online as a part of this project. From a PVTA point of view, as part of the previous project, which would, which would dovetail well into this project as well, there's been a lot of discussion with PVTA. They currently have a stop on Atwood Drive for the southbound PVTA, I'm sorry, the northbound uh, Route 5 PVTA bus line, where it actually runs on Atwood Drive, loops around. The picture in the lower left-hand corner is of the bus stop that exists for the, the uh, Atwood Drive stop. Uh, the site layout that we have proposed actually has a crosswalk uh, with a handicap access from the proposed north side development to this, this PVTA bus stop as well. And then like I indicated from bike accommodations, we're proposing a bike rack on the project site as well as there's a fairly currently underutilized uh, bike rack on the south side that, that's available for use as well. Brian, yes. I had a question about that, where you've got that up. Um, on the revised plan, you showed that crosswalk that you just mentioned going across, but um, it didn't appear like there was an ADA ramp or any way to maneuver around the bus stop You're if you were just walking. Right. And that was a comment that was picked up by the DPW as well. Uh -huh. And in our uh, response to comments to the DPW that I copied you on uh -huh. about an hour ago, we, we will have a revision that includes handicap accessibility. So that crosswalk will end with a handicap accessible location to get to the bus stop. And then can you make it um, wide enough so even a wheelchair could come around and get to the sidewalk, let's say if they were going to the other uh, building on the other side? Or, I mean, how would you maneuver around the bus stop if your yeah, bus stop wasn't a destination? Yeah, I don't see that. So essentially extending the, the sidewalk, and whether we're east or west of, of this area, I think we could, we could interconnect that crosswalk and sidewalk to the existing sidewalk for the south side of the Okay. We would include that in, in a revised set of construction drawings okay. when, they're, when they're developed. Okay, site design, um, from a stormwater management point of view, the, the site, and as, as I indicated in one of the earlier slides, the existing site is approximately five acres of impervious. The proposed site is 5.28 acres of impervious. So there is a slight increase in impervious area on the site, um, which from a stormwater point of view is going to provide us with a mix of redevelopment and new development. Uh, the majority of the stormwater management features that were designed on the site, um, essentially address the site as if it was new development, which is, which is in line with the DPW stormwater management requirements, as well as um, the DEP stormwater management handbook. So our design includes um, collecting stormwater on the site through both depressed uh, landscape swales um, and grass swales, as well as a system of catch basins, manholes, uh, where we discharge through uh, some of the larger pavement areas go through some treatment units, which are, you know, storm scepter type treatment units uh, discharging to there's an infiltration basin that's located here on the rear of the site. Uh, some of the smaller areas are actually going to discharge overland to we have a bioretention area on the northwest corner of the site here, as well as a bioretention area on the southeast corner of the site. Um, there are two proposed swales that are that are paved swales with some with some rock outlets that will discharge stormwater directly into the wetland system to the north. And that was a request that came from the Conservation Commission because there are currently, I believe, five or six swales that discharge stormwater to this area. They were concerned that if we pulled all the stormwater out of there, that it had a potential of changing the ecology of that wetland system. So we did. Uh, change our design to provide some additional uh, stormwater discharges to the north. Those don't go through any type of proprietary structures because from a grade point of view, as well as a property line point of view, there was no way to discharge uh, stormwater th through a subsurface system and then into that wetland system. So um, essentially the, the, the stormwater system has been designed to 
uh, retain and treat you know, every storm up to and through the 100-year storm event. Um, at about 4.30 this afternoon, we actually received the permit from the DPW for uh, the stormwater discharge on the site after a couple of different iterations and some questions back and forth with Doug McDonald on that. Um, one of the things that this does is it separates the private system from the public system. Currently on site, a significant amount of the paved area was collected and discharged through catch basins into the Atwood Drive system, which then discharges to the west through an existing outfall into the wetland system. Uh, the, new, the new proposed pavement and the new parking areas, we've separated that system. We're keeping it on site, we're treating it on site, and then we do have an overflow that ties into the city system prior to discharge. But as you can see from the stormwater calculations that we submitted, the, the actual peak rate flows to the city system is reduced dramatically. So it should alleviate any pressure that's on the city system at that location. We have two additional, I'm sorry, go ahead. You started out with the number of uh, square footage that's impervious and before and after. Yes. Uh, current, currently, it's five acres, uh -huh. and in the proposed condition, it's 5.28 acres. Okay. It's approximately a 6% increase. Okay. Um, the infiltration basin, like I indicated, has an outlet control structure that's the primary outlet to the city system, and then we also have two culvert discharge pipes that discharge to or just outside of the wetland to the northwest of the basin, as well as an emergency overflow. Uh, the stormwater system was designed so the basin stays out of the 10-year floodplain, which was a request by the Conservation Commission as well as the DPW. So at least during a statistical 10-year flood event, uh, the, the site stormwater system will operate as designed and as intended prior to any inundation from the floodwaters rising from, from the Connecticut River. Um, site design from a utility point of view, uh, this went through a couple of different iterations as well based on some, some discussions with the DPW. Uh, essentially from a sewer point of view, there's an existing pump station that is approximately here at the west end of the cul-de-sac existing on Atwood Drive. That's a municipal pump station owned and operated by the city of Northampton. Currently, the entire hotel uh, discharges their sewer by gravity to Atwood Drive. It then flows to the pump station and it's pumped back up to Route 5 and then off to the wastewater treatment plant by gravity. In the proposed development, the office building will discharge by gravity into that pump station and the hotel will discharge by gravity also through the, the, on, the uh, existing Atwood Drive system. I'm sorry. And to the pump station to be pumped back up, but the hotel in this scenario, I'm sorry, the restaurant in this scenario actually connects by gravity to the sewer line that's in uh, Route 5. Um, what, what that essentially has done is when we compare this, the, the flows from the existing uses on site that go to the pump station compared to what's proposed here with the new hotel and the office building, by removing the restaurant from that, the flows actually will decrease um, in proposed conditions that go to that sewer pump station compared to what we're currently seeing now. So from a capacity point of view, we've had discussions with the city. Um, they have no issues with the capacity. They had no comment on that. Um, you know, further beyond that, and it was indicated in our response to comment, as they requested uh, that the applicant would donate a uh, on-site generator for emergency situation, for power outage situation, our, the, the applicant and the owners have agreed that at, at the balance of the project, when the project actually moves forward on all phases, they would be willing to make that donation to the city so the city would have emergency backup power for that sewer pump station um, you know, in perpetuity as long as they maintain and operate the pump station. Um, from water sewer, our water service point of view, there's an existing water line in Atwood Drive with sufficient capacity. So the proposed buildings, the, the uh, office building, as well as the hotel will connect their services to that existing line that's, that's in Atwood Drive. The restaurant would, in, would connect to the water line that's in Route 5 currently. Um, Again, with discussions with the DPW, there's no issue for capacity. There's no concerns there. We've worked with Dave Sparks and the Water Department to come up with our connection details that meet the requirements of um, valving and long-term any of the, 
The final construction drawings along with the, with the mechanical designer of the building will also be coordinated with the DPW on what their requirements are for metering and backflow prevention as well. Um, go ahead. Just backing up to the pump station. Sure. So the, the capacity is down, what used to come from a hotel is greater than what will come from a hotel and the office medical building. Right, because the current hotel has a restaurant and a lounge in it as well. So those are, and th these are statistical numbers that are based on um, Title V regulations, Title V calculations. So to statistically, by removing the restaurant from the, that's currently in the hotel and connecting that directly into Route 5, that will actually reduce the flows that are going to the pump station. Yes. What's the bed count of the existing hotel? The new one's 107? The existing hotel has 127, 127 rooms. The new hotel will be 107. So, I mean, from, from an impact point of view, hotel to hotel, and especially from a traffic point of view, we assumed that that was essentially a wash because 127 to 107 uh, from a traffic point of view wasn't a significant change. But from, from an analysis for the sewer flows, the restaurant is really where the difference came up for the, for the flows. So um, from a private utility point of view, uh, the, the, similar to the public utilities, the anticipation is that uh, gas communication and electric will come from the existing services that are in Atwood Drive currently to be connected into the new buildings. Um, from regulatory compliance, I guess this is, this is where we've stepped through the process so far. Uh, there was an ENF that was submitted to MEPA, which was based on, um, a t it's, it's called a total, total wetland impact because we had more than a half acre I believe, of wetland impact, and in this case, the other wetland that we're talking about is floodplain because the entire site is in floodplain, as well as the uh, traffic chip gener trip generation put us in a place where we needed to submit an ENF to MEPA. Uh, that certificate by MEPA indicating that there's no additional review necessary was issued last Friday for the project. Um, Conservation Commission, we submitted a notice of intent, which essentially got us through the local regulations as well as Wetland Protection Act for uh, the wetland systems that are on the periphery of the site, as well as all of the impact to the uh, floodplain and um, bordering land subject to flooding. That hearing was just over an hour ago, and that closed and was approved then. Um, DPW stormwater permit was another permit that we issued concurrently with the site plan approval that you have in front of you. Uh, that permit was issued, as I indicated earlier, by the DPW this afternoon. Um, the two Permits in front of us are the access permit by MassDOT, which is required for the signal installation as well as because the project does connect through Atwood Drive to a state highway, which is Route 5 out front. Um, that has not been submitted because typically we would wait until after we had the local project and local approvals in place, and then we'll put forward with the final design for the intersection improvements and the signal to go to MassDOT for that. And then the NIPIDES EPA NOI is a construction-based permit that would be submitted uh, to EPA within a couple of weeks of when construction actually starts. Um, I believe that's the project summary in a nutshell, and I would love to entertain any questions that hopefully we can answer to, to uh, give you an idea of where we're headed on the project. Is a sit-down restaurant McDonald's? No. I don't know if McDonald's is a sit-down restaurant, but I think our intention is that it's not a drive-through restaurant based on all of the traffic um, analysis that we did and the site access and the site analysis. So I don't know that I have an example of what a sit-down restaurant is, but it is not a fast food with a drive-through that, that was included in any of our impact calculations. Uh, there are just a couple okay. questions on the um, on staff comments. One was some of the small uh, stuff on the, the light fixtures that were suggested. Uh, the cut sheet shows two different things. One is a flat lens, one is kind of a fisheye lens. And it's not a fisheye lens, it's intended. And I believe in the previous project, you made that a condition of approval, and we, we, we would be matching the project across the street, I believe, from a lighting point of view. It's the same so fixture or similar to? or I, I, Certainly similar to. I would anticipate probably the same, but I think we, we'd like the flexibility, but certainly 
not having a fish eyed fixture is was our intention from the start to minimize any spill off the site. Can you compare the on site space difference between the outline of the current hotel facility, which has a lot of stuff in it, and the, and the space on the ground of this new thing, more or less? Um, I, I guess what I'd say is it's very similar. That the, the current site has the hotel, the parking area, and then towards the rear of the site, there's the, the pool, the tennis courts, and then beyond that is a, is a lawn area where there's some outside events. Um, the it's the footprint of the building itself I'm curious about. So that's probably the best one to show it there. Um, the, the, the footprint of I mean, I guess this this shows because the I believe that's a blue blue outline, um, certainly on the the southwest and north side of the existing hotel footprint. That delineates what the, the limit of the footprint is on the site. So I think that gives you an idea of the shape of the existing hotel building um, in that plan and the the proposed four-story office building that's going to, to the west is actually narrower in width than the existing tennis courts are, but in that approximate location. Yeah, sheet three has the footprint of the clarion, and then sheet five would have the footprint of the proposed. Yeah, and that piece has an old toggle. The clarion diagram doesn't have square footage, which is really what you're asking, I think. It's big. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's definitely big and it's sprawling. And that's, that's the benefit of a project is that we're, we're looking at a much smaller footprint and going through stories instead of the... And that's what I was trying to, that was what I was trying to figure out, like how, how much smaller of a footprint it was. I don't think it was. Yeah. I don't have those. Okay. That's why it looks like so much parking. parking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had some curiosity about the storm runoff, but the, what's happened in the meantime is the people that know much more about that, the DPW, have now oh, issued. Yeah. Right. issued right. Right. So right. I, mean, I think I'm fine with that. I. Um, I would, they're doing the calculations based on hotel being similar to hotel, but the age of the existing hotel and the water usage considerations for the new construction, I think would be, would create much less stormwater runoff. I mean, uh, much less, uh, you know. Uh, water consumption. Water consumption, right. thank I, you. I, I believe that's true. Yeah, I mean, it, it ought to be. Uh, um, but like I said, that those are the things I was kind of thinking about, but that, the DPW is my, Answer. Yeah, right. exactly. Well, the pervious service is what you're worried about. Well, that was a different issues. question, um, and that's that's why I ask about that. But they've been through conservation commission, which is also you know more in their specialty area than me. Um, I I was happy to see that they had been to already been to the mass dot traffic engineer. I mean, I there again, that's the person who's going to know the most about connecting to Route Five and what they're going to have to do with the signals. Mm -hmm. I can't say that I've got anything really bothering me. I see some renderings or elevations. Do you have any information? There, there's some on the, on the drawings that we have. There's some information on elevations of the proposed office medical building, but nothing regarding the uh, restaurant or hotel. Uh, we, we included a uh, typical <laughs> hotel <laughs> elevation. and. To, to, to be fair and honest here, the, the intention is that the project is, is the, the, the permitting is most important so we can come up with a clear timeline on what can be leased and when it can be leased so we can come up with a development schedule and make the project work and go forward. So the intention is that 
as I indicated, the first phase being the, the office building, which has had the most amount of time and the most amount of design effort put into it, which is the rendering I have here that I started with in a slide. That is anticipated to be the first project going forward. Um, beyond that, the idea is that we want to include um, the opportunity for this hotel, this new hotel to be developed on the site, as well as a restaurant. With the idea being that we recognize that at any time any changes come forward based on what the market would bear, what the area wants, what the opportunities are, we'd be back in front of you know the planning board where our development plans change from what would be approved in the project. But the idea is that we can't sell the project until we have a permit in hand for the project. And so there's a little bit of a chicken and an egg there to try to come up with in crystal ball exactly what would be the most desirable in two, three, four, five years um, after we get this project moving on the heels of the project on the south side of Atwood Drive. Um, we did our best to come up with representative samples of what we were looking for and square footages and actual impacts, um, you know, both from utilities and from traffic point of view, that the idea is where we, were, where we would vary from that, we would need to come back in front of you to talk to you about what the changes are. I, I guess my concern would be if you vary from that, you'd come back, but what if for the sake of argument, you don't vary from what you're showing, but we don't know what you're showing because you haven't figured out what it's going to be yet. You've got the footprints and where they're going to be, but everything from parking to elevations to function of the restaurant is right. yet to be determined. So right. would it be in, in, in any case, whether you change or not change when you develop either one of the other two phases, you'd come back? I, I think the hope would be that if the hotel looks exactly like what we're proposing, that we would be okay from a permitting point of view. But I think from a... Uh, from the, the, the restaurant and getting you know, approval and coming back to the board or at least staff to look at elevations on what we would propose for that, we're absolutely you know, fine with, with coming back to you for those, mm -hmm. those kinds of changes. You know, so what special permits are required? Special you permit. For the restaurant? Um, no, special permit for the use of a site for a hotel and for medical office and for the multiple curb cuts. So there are sort of three special permit aspects and the rest of it being over 2,000 square feet of development requires site plan approval. So the office building part of this project is to be for medical use? Is that what the cut? Um, our, our analysis shows a split between medical and general office. And parking calculation was based on the split? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a backward and a forward calculation <coughs> where you know, we're trying to maximize the site, maximize the development element, the development envelope, as well as the marketability <coughs> of the project. So we, you know, the, the, the parking numbers match a split as proposed and as outlined in the details within the drawings between uh, medical and general office space. So in the, in the hotel, with the design of the, what the hotel looks like is going to be based on whatever tenant you get for it, right? Right. So it's going to look like this this motel at an airport or that motel at an airport and whatever. right and I mean maybe Kurt can help me out with what we use for a template here um, you know th this is an off-the-shelf four-story hotel that is a hundred and seven room hotel this is the elevation view that we took for it and the footprint that we have in the drawings goes hand in hand with this hotel I don't know that this is the brand and this is the look that it's going to go with in the end but all of our impacts, all of our assessment was based on this hotel. But we did not name the hotel because we don't have an agreement with whoever they are. Who the footprint is to maximize the site and have some general compatibility to several different hotel decisions going forward, for which we haven't made. But that footprint gives us some flexibility for several different types of, but they're all, with the exception of the exterior finishes. Right. We may not go quite to the degree of the Marriott type finish, but uh, we don't we don't know what the finish will be depending on whether we're franchise A or franchise right. B. They'll have some mandates to us, and we just haven't got there yet. So I think that you could easily create a condition in, in the permit that says, you know, if um, certainly for the restaurant, you know, any the prior to issuance of building permit for the restaurant, they have to come back and shoot show the elevations and show the final footprints and show if there's any modification to the um, layout in terms of impact to parking or landscaping or anything. 
And then if this sort of is a good enough placeholder that if they did end up with something that looks like this, that would be approved, but anything that was um, varied from that or had a varied footprint also would trigger site plan amendment. Again, to look at if there were shifts in footprints, how does that impact the, num the parking and the landscaping and the, um, all of the other site pieces in addition to the elevations? And, you know, you've done that on other projects, so I don't really see that as a, you know, an issue well, moving forward. So that means we can take out this sentence number two here about minor amendment? No, I think you should have a condition that creates it. Um, uh, that establishes the the point at which they need to come back for an amendment and the amendment would just address any footprint changes or elevation changes but it's site plan only for those you know specific um, items and um, but overall you approve the project subject to any amendments for the final facade elevation yeah it seems to me but usually for site plan we have a little more detail well, I was going to say for, for a footprint issue, that's site plan. Right. And it's it's technical, yes or no, does it meet the parameters and so forth. A hotel is special permit. Mm -hmm. And so that gives us a little more latitude as to does it fit, does it not fit, and bigger, bigger picture uh, questions. But if we limit the subsequent review to a site plan, then we're limiting ourselves to a foot, footprint technical you know, dimensional argument versus a bigger picture. Right. So I think the right the bigger question is that you should approve tonight is is a hotel appropriate at this location? Right. And is generally the footprint appropriate in this location? And so if that's a yes, then okay. Then you're just left to dealing with the final details of what that footprint looks like. Which I, it seems like we're in agreement with that, but. But when they come back in three years with those details, mm -hmm. will that be a site plan review or yes. a special permit? That would be a site plan. Because you've already approved the idea that a hotel is appropriate on the site. Okay. It's just a matter of how it um, fits. And, you know, it could be that at that point they need to, they want to move parking spaces around because the, it's not exactly a rectangle or something like that. So we could conceivably say that this was not a suitable site for a hotel. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I mean, it would be kind of silly, but <laughs> so essentially, we're going to approve the site plan for the restaurant and the hotel. Well, not for the restaurant, for the hotel. Right. <clears throat> well, you're approving but it for the restaurant too, because there's all this other connectivity issue: the sidewalks, the landscaping. So, if they can just plunk a box down where the restaurant is supposed to be, then all they need to come back is show you and show you are the facades. If the rectangle is a little bit different, then they might need some other adjustments in the site plan when yeah, they come I back. Should, I think it should not take very much to trigger them having to come back. The minor, the minor amendment would have to be really minor, and it's a little hard to... Well, I think the term minor is really, in the whole scheme of thing, this giant project, this 80,000 square feet of office, plus hotel, plus restaurant, that's the big pick, that's the big project. But when they're really coming back to you, it's just the final details. And so to the extent that that's minor compared to the rest of the project is. But is it well, the meaning of minor means that staff could approve the changes and they wouldn't have to come back to the meeting? No. Uh, oh. no. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm comfortable with the, the restaurant to me, to me personally, everything makes sense here. And from a zoning, it all is agreeable with me. In the future, phase three, when the restaurant comes, that's a site plan review issue. The hotel, because we don't, again, because we don't know what it looks like, I would like to have that open to a special permit amendment versus a site plan amendment to give us a little more latitude in what we're looking at three years from now or five years from now or whatever. Not that it'd be argumentative, just we've got a placeholder, which is fine. We agree big picture, it's gonna work. But when you come back and whatever it's gonna look like, that should, to me, be a special permit discussion, not a site plan review. Does that make sense? I, I am, <laughs> I would try this flavor on it. Um, if, I, if they came back with a hotel that was four stories high that had 107 rooms in it, it fit the footprint, then I think that we planned the, the, the whole campus around that. We've worried about traffic, we've worried about stormwater and, you know, all of the pieces that are going on right now. The restaurant is the one that it's more 
uh, th that I'm having a harder time saying, oh, if, if it fits that box, then it's fine. Um, it's, it's the most unknown piece of the development so far, and it has the most variability in what it can turn out to be because it's a McDonald's or it's a sit-down restaurant or it's a, you know, I, I, under, I heard you say it's not a drive-through, but how much traffic that restaurant generates. Is it a, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Is it only, a, is it a nightclub associated with the hotel? Those, those will create very different things that that's the kind of, that's the piece I want to have a conversation about when it comes back. I think the hotel is either going to match the box or not in more, it, it feels like it will. Mm -hmm. um, and so I could go to the, the site plan step with the hotel more easily in my head than I can with the, the, the idea of the restaurant. The restaurant isn't tonight the special permit. Right, there's no special permit for a restaurant. You could easily say this is a special permit, or this the approval is for a sit-down restaurant, no drive-throughs are allowed, period. Unless they come back and specifically amend, we want to do a drive-through and here's how it's going to function, because it's going to totally change the way that would function. Um, and I, I think that it, I mean, my recommendation to you all would be that even if it does fit in the box, you still want to look at the elevation. So that would, no matter whether it's a smaller box, the same size box, or a bigger box, it still should come back to you for final elevation approvals. And maybe they want to make some modifications to the landscaping based on that tenant that wants to locate there anyway. So I think all of that, my recommendation to you would be absolutely that comes back to you because you don't have a final tenant and you want to see what the windows look like and where the, everything's facing and, and all of that. And that site plan, and I guess I would go back in, in terms of the hotel, I think if you feel like the hotel, when it comes back to you, a site plan isn't meeting the special permit that was granted, then at that time you say, this has to come back for special permit, we can't grant this right now. But I don't think that, I think that you can easily separate and say, we've looked at the general site plan, we're approving the site plan, and we like that the hotel is an appropriate use here, um, but we want to look at the final details. And I guess I would encourage you not to um, require that it be a special permit amendment because you can make that decision about whether it's appropriate to have a hotel on that site and it doesn't much matter where the doors are per se or the windows and how they function I don't think on the site or what it looks like I guess is more of a site plan issue um, because you've seen sort of the typical off-the-shelf Mm -hmm. Hotel, which is likely to lo locate in this vicinity. I'm sorry. Go, no, go ahead. I was going to say, at, at the risk of confusing it a little bit more, which I don't want to do, um, I, I guess the, it seems like the question is more about the appearance than necessarily the use and the impacts when we're looking at traffic and um, utilities and stormwater and so on and so forth. So I guess what, what I would like selfishly to, if, if possible, in within that is, I don't necessarily want to have to come back for a full site plan review of a restaurant, given that all of our impacts that we've calculated so far include a 4,000 square foot restaurant. But I mean, is there is it is it truly the the appearance that the board wants another crack at, if that's the right term to put there? I, I think or it's the use or I think it's I think it's both. You since uh, appearance since we don't know what it's looks like today and and use if it's going to be a, a sit down a breakfast only a nightclub or whatever that would impact traffic and and so that would be I guess that's still not that would I don't know if that's special permit review no it's, it's not it's still not be so plan. right so but I think part of the site plan submission criteria are submissions is a submission of elevation. Absolutely. So that piece is blank. Absolutely. So uh, that certainly right. automatically sort of triggers site plan amendment right. um, because you don't have that piece finalized. Um, and so I think that even if it were, I, I think you could evaluate the traffic impacts at that time when it comes for site plan amendment, if it happens to be, you know, 24 seven operation, uh, versus just a lunchtime restaurant, but I, I think that you—that's part. Of, that could be part of the 
when they do the final tenancy and outfit, you know what it's going to be, and you can look at that at the time as part of that. Amendment. We we would then submit uh, an impact statement comparing to what was proposed originally right. for the board review. Right. Yep. Do you have orientations um, settled on, or or that's going to depend on the for the restaurant? No, not at all. Okay. It was it was essentially a footprint and the impacts associated right. with it, so we had a placeholder for. So we'd need the sidewalks. Use. Well, the sidewalks are shown. Now, yeah. It's set up to be because you're required to have access from the street right. and throughout. So that's what those sidewalk um, okay. is shown. Even though there may not, you know, the precise location. Let's say there's a door on that side. They might move the sidewalk closer to the door or at the door. Okay. Well, so and it. I'm sorry, and then the ho the hotel orientation is, is <coughs> set. It just depends on what it's going to look like. Right. Okay. Um, when it shows the restaurant uh, up against the road with no parking in front of it, uh, so when when you approve this, it wouldn't al you allow allow you to locate it elsewhere on that. Agreed. Okay. The next question I had was. Uh, are you firmly committed to having a hotel there, or is there a chance that maybe there won't won't be marketable, and you want to change it to an office building or something? I like that? I think that that's certainly an opportunity, and that's a possibility. Of looking forward down the line, that that, that could be a different use as well. But how firmly are you committed to having a hotel there? Pardon? Economic decisions will help us make that okay. decision. Okay. Well, it seems to me as a bottom line, we're being asked if, if on this property, if you can have an office building, which we obviously have already set precedent for, um, and it's the same type of office building, it's the split purpose, a hotel and a restaurant, which we already have a hotel and the hotel has a restaurant. So um, I, I, I'm after the kind of details of what, what's it going to look like and how's it gonna function and what's the traffic movement gonna be and all of that. But I'm not really sure that's what is asked of us at the moment. Well, I think you. I think what you would assume is they've set it up to have the traffic, the functionality as shown on the plan. So they have the parking area, they have the in the access ways, they have the pedestrian um, crossing. So to the extent that any of that changes, that's going to trigger an amendment. Right. right. I agree. That's not what's being asked of us now. I just want to be sure that what we agree to now allows us the opportunity in the future to have that discussion. Right. Any other questions from the board? I, I can actually go back to your question now that Jean did some analysis. The existing hotel footprint is approximately 58,500 square feet. It's twice what the, the hotel, proposed hotel is, right? Um, yeah, the, the, pr the, the proposed, proposed hotel is about 15,000. 15, yeah. 15, so the, the existing footprint where, where the, the building touches the ground is 58,800. In the proposed condition, all three buildings as they're drawn, the total footprint is 39,300. So that's about a 25% decrease. All three, that's including the restaurant. That's including a 4,000 square foot side. restaurant. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. The hotel's 15,300. Yep. Anybody else? There's a square piece of parking in the front yep. part of that. Is that parking uh, in counting attached to across the street? What is that parking? Yes, that is, is parking for the development on the south You've side. You've gotten the, the brownie points for that, for for right. parking for right. the other side of the street. There's that that parcel is not included yes. at all in the yes. submittal. Okay. There's no cal there, none of the parking calculations. Yes. None of the impact, none of the site, none of none of the impacts. That's a separate project that's, that's built out. Yeah. John, do you have a question? Just, um, and maybe this goes back to Franny's question a little bit. Is this an economically viable project if all you ever build is the first building? Exactly, I understand precisely your 
question. Well, I'm just just curious, and it's not necessarily our purview. I'm just curious that yeah. you know, could it be that market conditions change, economy changes, you build the first building and you never do the other two? I mean, are we going to end up with a building that can't sustain itself, and you know, we end up with a one vacant building and a big empty lot? You know, I guess from a community standpoint, just. Certificate of occupancy, we won't have that for the office medical building until the hotel, the existing hotel comes down. Correct. So it's hard if they want to be in the business. But, but be, because of the duration of construction, we, we need the ability to start construction of the building while the hotel is right. still online. So from a phasing point of view, we're that's favorable by the board. Uh, questions from the public? Anyone here from the public? No. Okay. Uh, well, I just want to know, you know, DPW's comments mostly relate to details about check valves and water and sewer lines, and so those I think can be consolidated and taken care of at the DPW end in terms of condition that they comply with the city standards for connectivity. And then the only other thing that they recommend is a condition that um, states that as offer the sewer pump um, backup generator be installed mm -hmm. prior to the final closeout of the last building. Um, oh, and uh, that they also want to see revised construction plans prior to issuance of a building permit just to make sure all those details did get put in on the plans. Um, and then the crosswalk issue. When about you said the, the proposed generator prior to the completion of the last piece. So that says you could have the office building and the hotel both going through the pump station. And the, the restaurant is the piece that's not going to go through there. So if that right. never got built, you would still have the city in the same position yeah I mean you could change that <laughs> to the completion, the completion of the, of the right. hotel slash office building yeah. I would yeah that, yeah because after that it's not about phase two or right. phase three it's the restaurant's not tied in anyway right. so right I, I think the idea behind it was that it was given by the developer you know from a financial point of view when the project reaches that that pinnacle that the entire project has been built out that there there's not a requirement or an obligation um, for the developer to donate that generator for the project. It's an existing sewer pump station that the, the DPW has a generator. They've been operating it this way since the late 60s, I believe it was, when it was constructed. So I think the idea was that the, the developer, you know, assuming success throughout the project at the last development point would then, you know, write, write the check to the city, if you will, for that donation at the end. I, I can't remember what you said about this, the sewer from the office building or the proposed building on the west is that a gravity feed or is that is the pump needed for it, it it gravity feeds to the existing pump station okay, on the so, site yes so we only have to worry about the the uh, generator after the hotel is built right well the, if if then I, I think what they're suggesting is this is above and beyond what they uh, you know right. BBW is concerned about the long-term viability of the existing system so this would help support for the, the longer long term. Um, so because the restaurant is gravity fed directly to Route 5, it's not going to go through the no, pump. So yes, it would be up to that. And the hotel is gravity fed with the existing system to the pump. To the pump, right. Yeah. I'm not sure I know how all of you all are going to think about it. I just think that this, this generator some rationale for going either way with that. I would agree if there was a requirement. Yeah, if there is required. If it's a, a freebie by the developer, then I don't know if, how I feel about making that a condition okay. as to when they're going to provide it. Okay. <laughs> they offered one. Yeah. Right. 
and, and, and I mean, to, to, to your point, there's, there's actually, with, with what we're proposing to connect, to connect to the pump station, there's actually a reduction in flows compared to the existing hotel that's been discharging to that pump station, you know, for, for the life of, of that facility. So, I mean, we, we feel like it was an, an additional over and above. It wasn't a requirement. It's, it's, not a, it's not a regulatory requirement to put for, for the developer to put a generator on that pump station. Um, and then the, the only other item, I guess, would be the, you know, just um, ensuring about um, the crosswalk and ADA as a condition, the ADA crosswalk or landing pad. Um, and then I just wanted, I had raised in my staff memo to you all about the width of the Atwood Drive at the intersection and mm -hmm. the pedestrian crossing width of that signal. And there's two lanes, you know, a left turn and a right turn. And I'm just not sure there's, um, uh, if the applicant wants to keep left turn and right turn, I think those lanes should be narrowed so that the crossing dimension for pedestrians is much less than what's shown. So if you could go over that dimension again, that would be helpful. I, and I, I guess I don't know what that dimension is because it was our anticipation that that entire intersection was going to be subject to mass dot purview. So we're going to fall into what their requirements are for lane width, for um, the, the layout, the access, and the permit. So. Well, they're not going to require you to have a left turn and a right turn lane. That's an option that you all want to take on. And there's also, we also probably have flexibility in the dimension of those lanes. Are they 12 foot wide lanes? That's probably unnecessary. You could go to probably 10 foot lanes because you're at a signal, you're going slowly, and you don't need the width, the full width of a standard, you know, highway right. lane. I, so I, I guess I that's the issue. I don't know what issue. those numbers are. I mean, I, I can certainly tell you that we, you know, it's 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 in all of our benefit to make it as narrow as possible because it's less impact and it's less pavement and it's it's less. But but I do believe that some of those intersection standards are going to fall back to Mass Dot on what the radii are and exactly how that all shakes out. And and I agree. I mean, the the left turn and right turn is what gives us the additional um, flow and it, it improves the the operation of the intersection. It's not necessarily mandatory, but it makes it. A, I think the uh, our. Um, Traffic analysis was performed assuming the signal was developed under the build conditions and that did include a left turn and a separate right turn coming from out for drive. So I think we do need right. those two lanes, but so, the lane with But what was the level I mean, was the level of service so dramatically different with just one lane? I don't know that. Yeah, I don't I don't know that either. Yeah. I mean I, I don't know how we, and um, I don't know how you all think about it but maybe maybe it's not an issue if there is a pedestrian um, signal and a push button signal that allows you know a minute or mm -hmm. five minutes the wider it gets you know if that standard is in place that I suppose the pedestrian can take as long as they need to take as long as the cycle is you put an island there too and make it even more complicated <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm biased by thinking about the geometry and the function there now mm -hmm. and the fact that that's not a highly you know the, the area is not pedestrian friendly I mean it's just yeah. it, it's, it's a rare occurrence um, I don't know that 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 we need to be that close-minded in thinking about what we want at the intersection because that's not going to stay that way um, particularly not with this development and others going there but I I think that MassDOT will will dictate certain things about the intersection but I'm with you they're not going to tell them the the lane width on the on the site itself right. but it seems like to me that they've got the same incentive that we do in in narrowing the lanes as as everyone is tending to do now and so I I mean I if we did condition it I can't imagine they would that that would be problematic unless they did run into trouble with MassDOT and I, I just Maybe you could put a condition then that would be 10 foot wide lanes and, and, and then if DOT doesn't um, allow for that, they can come back and, and address it at that point. With a minor adjustment. <laughs> well, I mean, you could decide whether that's important to you all or whether it's a staff level review to the extent, <coughs> you know, if there's a letter from DOT saying, no, your lanes have to be 11 feet, then that's pretty clear. <laughs> um, 
And I don't think that would rise to the level of needing to have a hearing about it. Right. Am I <coughs> we done with that, that part? Uh, my understanding is the only bike racks in the new project are at the office building. Because we certainly require bike racks at restaurants and hotel, I mean, hotels. At hotels also? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, there's a fairly large precedent <laughs> what we've done uh, with Carolyn Sell uh, on the first two buildings was the original <coughs> plan was for two uh, fully covered bike racks uh, each with 12 spaces um, this bike rack as you saw in the, in the photo on Atwood Drive was uh, centrally located for the first uh, supposed to be for the first building and then marry a second equal sized one for a total of 24 for the second building. Um, what after real experiences um, of the first building being open, we saw that um, a structure like that centrally located, people just by nature wanted to go and chain their bike to the rail at the front of the stairs. So Carolyn uh, and Wayne understood that and, and what we've actually done is now use this one as a central uh, rack and installed two uh, smaller freestanding uncovered uh, racks so that they're more appropriate close to a building. You can imagine a big huge structure cannot go right up against the window uh, of the building. So the, the main centrally located one is the, the larger one, somebody that might be there all day for long hours where if you're just a visitor and coming and going, the smaller bike racks are more appropriate closer to the building. So. Um, the owners are more than happy to accommodate a smaller rack that in real life will be used <coughs> more than something centrally located. No problem, but where are they? Well, those, those I guess to follow up that, those don't necessarily have to be um, placed so much because they're of size where they can literally go uh, in a parking spot um, depending on what what actually comes about they can be right up against the walking path or uh, in the closest spot outside of the handicapped spots or something to that extent yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure the planning board is going to require some so you have to put some thought into it well what you could say since the hotel and the restaurant will have to come back for an amendment you could indicate how many you want to see on that plan when it comes back for an amendment yeah i mean i think it's just a matter of fairness we've been through yeah been mm -hmm. through one of these and, and sure. it was just un and just for reference a 40,000 square foot building in this case was allotted a six rack bike rack right. so if that gives you any perspective on what the future could hold by square footage of bikes needed um, I guess I'm not clear about what what the hardscape and landscape will be oh I see it now phase one okay I, I, I hadn't seen the the phasing so everything, so this entire parking lot, once the hotel comes down, will be built as part of phase one. That's right. Okay. That's right. As well as all of the stormwater infrastructure and, and everything in support of all the necessary pavement and building that's needed for this, for that building. Okay. Thanks. Uh, public comment is still open. Somebody. I move we close public comment. Second. Second okay. All in favor? Oh. No. You're done. You're done. Well, <laughs> and I, I guess as you call it, the, the risk of it already being closed, um, I would have one thought suggestion that when we go back to the lane width, is it possible that a condition could be something al along the lines of minimum lane width, width acceptable to mass dot for the intersection? So we're not obligated to come back if we can't meet a 10 foot requirement, but we are cognizant of minimizing how much asphalt and how much the, the pavement widths are. Suits me. Or if we could say 10 feet, unless a lot, uh, more is required by- 10 feet uh, or minimum accepted by MassDOT gets in the yeah. same leeway. Right. That sounds good. So we had a couple issues um one the, the handicap accessibility to the bus stop mm -hmm. which they said they do but that should be a condition right. yeah. uh, and that widening the concrete there yep and 
Yeah, stormboard is approved, Conscom approved, the lighting, no fisheye lens. It should be, do we just want to say no fisheye or do we want to make uh, it comparable to lighting the south side? To adjacent property. Yeah, or if they wanted to do something different, I don't know that that necessarily matters, just as long as it's not a fisheye, okay. I think. I mean, if they have a different design that they come upon. Well, they have to read the requirements anyway. What's that? They have to meet the requirements. Right. 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 Uh, we've got bike racks at both the hotel and restaurant. So when they when they do come back, they just have to show them. And anything about DPW? You mean? Do we need to condition anything about? Oh, um, I would just oh. I would suggest all, that all water and sewer connections be done in accordance with DPW standards, including requirements for tie cards, valves, and taps, etc. And then all plans shall be amended to address the technical details as required showing compliance with these city standards. Um, and prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall submit final construction documents for review by DPW to confirm compliance with the utility designs. Um, and then the pump station, where do we, the, the backup generator as offered by the applicant, prior to issuance of the final CO for the last building, a backup generator for the sewer pump shall be installed for the existing pump station consistent with DPW and building code standards mm -hmm. that work? Well, I don't, you know, the last building is kind of vague. Uh, well, I think. No, not if they stay mm. a, on the plan. I mean, right. they have to come back if it's a fourth building. Or well, to me, if you say the last building, it means the restaurant. And it's not applicable. Mm. Is it? Well, well, isn't that what you all decided? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think I've been. Yes. It's not physically applicable, but it's monetarily applicable because it's not required. So they're if they're going to offer that up. I mean, the purpose of it has nothing to do with. Well, it doesn't, but but. Well, I don't care. It's not a requirement. Yeah. Um, and do we want to put a condition on uh, not a drive-through restaurant? Or, or can that oh, not yeah. be the way it is now? Yeah. Or? yeah, absolutely. So you could say, you know, the a sit-down restaurant is approved, no drive-through or um, slash fast food restaurant. Mm -hmm. And then you said, um, so let me just get the DOT standard. The width of Atwood Drive Lane shall be 10 feet or minimum acceptable width. Okay. The other thing about that is that I don't know that Mass DOT is going to require the pedestrian signal. Uh, right. So actually, I think you should have a condition in there that uh, the mm -hmm. signal installation should occur. Actually, the timing of that as well. Signal installation should occur concurrently with the construction of the four-story office building. Um, and should be activated within six months of the first um, CO of that building? I don't or? know that I, you want the pedestrian signal put in and planned until you get the whole intersection done. So I just think it needs to be a condition, but I don't know that I need okay. to, the timing on it should not be out of phase with the rest of the work they're coordinating. Right. Um, so in conjunction with the intersection? In conjunction with the intersection design, um, uh, it's a condition that we have a pedestrian signal. Oh, I was, I was, my first condition was the signal insulate, just the traffic signal installation right. should be, should occur concurrently with the construction of the office building is number one. Um, and that's just about timing of when that signal should go in. Um, and that it should be activated within six months of the completion of that building. Okay. But the, then a second condition about the pedestrian phase on the signal that the signal shall include a head If you case. think that signal's going to go in with the first building, I guess I wasn't, I didn't have that in my mind that the timing for the, for the intersection design and the signal would be done by the time they finish the office building. But if I'm making assumptions there and you think the signal will be done for that first building, then the pedestrian signal should go with it, with the, um, with the traffic signal. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know that you, we had the conversation. I don't, I certainly didn't have a specific conversation with the applicant, and you might want to get a nod from the yeah. <laughs> um, applicant just, if that's okay. Does, the, how Why much do they have traffic? to be tied together? Well, I guess, 
um, I think because the impact, I think the traffic study shows that there is a demand for the signal. And so, you know, you could see a situation where maybe a different kind of developer might say, oh, look, I got my permit for all this stuff, but you know what, I can't get the signal done, and I'm getting all these other buildings done. And maybe it's not to their advantage, so maybe they will get the signal done and the timing is in a, an issue, but I guess the piece that's part of the traffic um, mitigation is that signal to make the function of that intersection work. Well, and it, putting the signal there, putting the hardware up and getting it up, it, it really isn't dependent on mass DOT. I mean, it's their, it's their road, I, I, but, but it isn't dependent on all the other uh, timing traffic control devices that are all play, need to play together eventually. So you can go back and do the signal timing when, when, you, when mass DOT finishes the other signals that they're doing. Right. So, yes, I've, I've heard you. We should do it at the end of the first building. And it should have a pedestrian crosswalk. Right. And so then this, this signal shall include a pedestrian phase with push button activation. And I think, you know, I can understand where DOT might not want a full four <laughs> um, or two or three crossings. You wouldn't want and that's not the, to the. No, no, no. Car. So I think the issue is really <laughs> just the Atwood Drive crossing. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But make that clear to DOT mm -hmm. that that has to be part of it. Yeah. Any other conditions? No? Somebody want to make a motion? <laughs> I see a lot of finger pointing. Right. He's looking at it. I've got it. Oh, I thought I thought Ann was going to do it. She's all disheveled. I, I, I move we approve uh, major site plan, special permit hotel, multiple curb cuts, four-story, 800 square foot office, medical building, 107 room hotel, 400 square foot restaurant, 23, 4,000 4, square foot restaurant at 23 Atwood Drive, map ID 39-4143. With, with conditions. <clears throat> Second. Second, John. All in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very much. For all of our discussion, I think it's a pretty clean project. Yeah. It's amazing how. If you wait 10 more minutes, we can adjourn exactly at the same time as the last meeting. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're done early. I could go out tonight, but my son is home alone tonight, so oh. I can't. So i got to go back and sure pet the dog and eat Isn't that dinner. what the phone is for? I know. <laughs> uh, we had, you, you referenced that you were going to send minutes, but I don't I didn't I get didn't any get minutes. Them. Yeah, you didn't get them. I wonder why. <laughs> not, not enough minutes. In the day. <laughs> I need for a second. Sorry. There. Um, third. We are adjourned. Awesome. Uh -huh. Thank you.